Hi, welcome to another tutorial on solving modulus equations. Now, this is the second one in my series where I'm trying to show you different types of modulus equations. And you've got to be so careful when you do them because you can't apply necessarily always the same kind of methods when solving them. It depends on how they look. And what we're handling here in this example is where you have a modulus on one side of the equals and you just have a constant on the other side, a positive constant, okay? I mean, if this was negative 3, the answer would be no solution. You should always have a positive constant on here because the modulus of anything always is a positive value. So as I say, if this was equal to minus 3, you can't have a particular value of x that would return minus 3. Okay, so we're just looking at modulus equals a positive number. And as I say, there's three ways that we can do this type of equation. The way that will always work for any modulus equation, whatever, is a graphical method. So I'm going to start with that because, as I say, you can use it all the time. So what we'll do is we'll draw some axes and this is going to be for drawing then the two graphs y equals x minus 2, the mod of x minus 2 and y equals 3. I'm assuming by the way that you're familiar with drawing modulus graphs and you're familiar with the modulus function. If not, just go on my website, look under the modulus function and look at the tutorials first of all on what it is and how to draw the graphs. Okay, so assuming that you're familiar with drawing the graph of y equals the mod of x minus 2, we'll just do this in red, then what you're going to have, if the mod was not round there, we remember we look at the graph of y equals x minus 2, which would be a straight line coming down something like this through the y-axis at minus 2. But when you have a mod graph, instead of going below the x-axis, it gets mirrored in the x-axis. So you get a reflection, something like this. Okay? And the graph would have continued down through minus 2, but gets mirrored. So this point here is positive 2. It's worthwhile noting what this point is, by the way, on the x-axis. This is when y is equal to 0. And y is equal to 0 when x is 2. So might as well mark that in. So we've got the graph then of y equals the mod of x minus 2. What we now need to look at is the graph of y equals 3. y equals 3, we'll do it in green here, would be a horizontal line going through the 3 on the y-axis. Okay, so that's going to be the graph then, let's just mark it in in green, y equals 3. Now the solutions then to this mod equation are going to be where the two graphs intersect. And it's a good idea to label them, that's that point there and that point there. Let's label this point A and we'll label this point here B. And we're looking for the x coordinate of these points of intersection. Those x values that would be, if we like, projected down onto the x-axis there and there. So one looks to be greater than 2 and the other one looks to be a negative number. All right, so that's good for checking out whether we've got the solution right at the end, or it stands a chance of being right anyway. So how do we get these x values at a and b then? Well, let's consider a first of all. Let's just say at a. Now, at a, we're looking for the intersection of this line with the green line. And what is the equation of this line down through here? Well, it is going to be the negative of all of x minus 2. Remember, this line would be y equals x minus 2. But if you 
reflect the bottom part of the line in the x-axis to get this line we're going to have the negative of this quantity in here. So at A what we've got is minus bracket x minus 2 equals the y value here for the green line which was 3. And if you expand this bracket out what we've got is minus x plus 2 equals the 3. And if we rearrange this, let's say we add x to both sides and take 3 from both sides, we'll have 2 minus 3 equals x, or basically x equals 2 minus 3, which is going to be minus 1. We've got a negative value to the left of x equals 0, so we can see that this value is negative 1. There you go. So that's one solution. And you can see it works. Look, if we just put x is minus 1 in here, minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. The mod of minus 3 is going to be positive 3, which is what we want. All we need to do now is just look at b. Okay, so at b, what have we got? Well, we've got this line intersecting with y equals 3. And this line is the line y equals x minus 2. So at b we've got just x minus 2 equals 3. And if we add 2 to both sides we therefore have x equals 3 add 2 which is 5. So that coordinate there is going to have an x value of 5. And again check it out 5 works 5 take 2 is 3 the mod of plus 3 is 3. Okay so our solutions then are basically x equals minus 1 and 5. All right, so just highlight that there. Now I did say that we've got two other ways of doing this, but remember the graphical way is always a way that's going to work. Okay. So what is the other way? Well, the other way is very similar to this basically. Inside this mod function we know that we could either have a positive value or a negative value that comes to 3. So we can either say that x minus 2 equals 3 or we can take the negative of this version negative of x minus 2 equals 3. Well if you notice that's exactly what we did over here basically okay what this refers to is just the point B and this refers to the point A. But remember as I pointed out in an earlier tutorial where we had X functions over here, terms in X, if you do this you've got to always check your answers at the end. Okay, because sometimes they might not be consistent with your solution. But when you've got a positive number here, they will always work. Okay, so we know the solutions to this. I'm not going to run through it again. There they are, down through there. So you end up with, for this one, you end up with x equals 5. And for this one, you end up with x equals minus 1. Okay, so that's the other way. So what's the final way? Okay, let's just rule this off. Well, the other way is a squaring method. And you can only apply the squaring method if you know that you've got positive values on both sides of the equals. If this was an x term, you can't guarantee that your term on the right is necessarily going to be a positive or negative value. Okay, So you, you cannot use a squaring method. But we've got a positive value here. This is positive, so we can do a squaring method. And that is square both sides. So you end up with x minus 2 all squared equals 3 squared. And if you square this out in the usual way, what you're going to get is x squared minus 4x plus 4 and that equals 3 squared which is 9. 
We've got a quadratic equation here, so we need to make sure we rearrange it, make it equal to zero. So we therefore have x squared minus 4x, and we take 9 from both sides, so we get minus 5 equals zero. And then if you factorize this, or if it didn't factorize, you can always use the quadratic formula. Remember that formula, x equals minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You can use that and you'll get the same result. But if you factorize this, you should find that it factorizes to x minus 5 and x plus 1. So you can just check that out. It expands to give x squared minus 4x minus 5. Remember now, each factor can equal 0. So you can either have x minus 5 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. And this leads to the results that we wanted. x equals 5 or x equals minus 1. Okay, so hopefully you've got that. You've got the three methods then that are available for this type of question where you've got a modulus on one side of the equals and a positive number on the other side.